When my grandma was born in 1927, there were two billion people on Earth. By the time my parents were born in 1953, there were three billion people on Earth. When I was born in 1985, there were five billion people on Earth. Today, there are seven billion people living on the planet. Have you ever wondered where we will find the food, clothing, and shelter we will need to sustain the world's exploding population in the years ahead? I try to be environmentally friendly. I recycle, compost, turn off the water when I brush my teeth. But does any of it make a difference when there are just so many people living on the planet? I think most Americans realize that population growth is a drag on the country as a whole. I mean, our, our standard of living is going down continuously because of it. But they think, uh, well, what difference can my third child make or my fourth child? And that's a big problem in the United States. Not really big families, but uh, too many families with three and four children. Hmm. Families just like mine. My mom is Roman Catholic and a modern day saint. But when it comes to family planning, Apparently, she messed up. And as the third child, just call me Emily Burden on the Planet Fraser. Like most Catholic kids, I inherited a fierce sense of loyalty to my guilty conscience. Even the grocery store is an ethical minefield. Lucky for me, the world's expert on overpopulation is still around and has agreed to an interview. The mass extinction going on today is being caused entirely by one species, that's Homo sapiens, that's us. Over our evolutionary history, we've become very good at noticing sudden changes. If a leopard jumps out of the room and comes right at you, you know exactly what to do. If somebody throws a ball at your head, you do a whole series of differential equations and duck. But the problem today is not so much the very fast things that are going on, but the slow changes, what's going on in the ecological stage that we're playing on. And it's the size of the human population, the number of nuclear weapons, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that are causing our troubles. It turns out evolution has made a lot of strange twists and turns. What survives? is best at survival, not necessarily best. So the idea is that what we see in nature is right and true and moral, but all of this has happened by chance. It's all through the blind process of natural selection that these things occurred. For us, it's morally abhorrent to have slaves. However, for the slave-making ants, it's a fundamental necessity. They cannot feed themselves, cannot forage themselves. The mandibles of these ants render them incapable of actually handling objects. They're like swords. You're sitting at a dinner table, but you've got two four foot long sabers and you're trying to daintily put that piece of sushi into your mouth. Their primary weapon is their greatest handicap. So if slave maker ants are bound by evolution to prey on other ants, can we blame our destruction of the planet on evolution too? We need to learn emotionally and spiritually to connect 
with our life support systems, with other people. We have to keep asking the question, what is your ethical responsibility towards the future? So maybe all that Catholic guilt stuff does have a good purpose. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to stir within us. I explained to the priest that I'm feeling guilty about my impact on the planet. His response? I would say, snap out of it. Really? Shouldn't hurting God's creation be some sort of sin? It's one thing to feel guilty when, you've, when you have done wrong that you haven't made changes to address, but um, I'm confident that you've begun doing that. I may be trying, but I'm pretty sure it's not enough. I'm part of this system that's so much bigger than me. It feels like I'm one small ant in a colony of seven billion. The thing that makes a human person most uh, dignified is freedom of will, being able to choose among options, not simply on the basis of hunger, but a power of will that supersedes what any of the other animals seem capable of doing. If we really have freedom of will, why does it feel so hard to use it? The circle of death. It's a byproduct of the fact that they're extremely good at what they do, which is use scent to find their way through complex environments. They're not really visual creatures. Their language and syntax is via smell. They're leaving trails for themselves with chemicals. If it rains and the ants are out foraging, that rain can wash away the smell. And once it stops raining, they go, okay, where's the trail? And they smell around. And so they do this wandering. They could end up ramifying a trail that doesn't go from point A to point B, but actually just goes in a circle. And so they go around and around and around in circles until they starve to death and die. Are we another species trapped in a labyrinth of our own design, blindly following each other around in circles? There's one more question I need to ask. What kind of hope should we have <laughs> for the future? Well, I drink a lot, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, if, if you drink enough wine, you can keep your internal environment in great shape while the external goes down the drain. The effects of alcohol on the human brain vary somewhat from person to person, but its main effects follow a general pattern. The judgment center becomes more and more depressed. The person usually feels confident that everything is all right. What is the purpose of life? To be the eyes and ears and conscience of the creator of the universe, you fool. I always answer the question of what kind of hope I have. I always used to answer it by saying that I am uh, absolutely convinced that we could solve the problem, but I'm very doubtful about whether we will. Now I have to say I'm not so convinced we can solve the problem but I sure as hell think it'd be very worthwhile to try. So what have I learned from all this? In some ways, I feel like I'm back where I started, knowing that I need to do something, but still not sure what. Natural selection may have gotten us this far, but now we need to figure out how to evolve. <laughs>